So it's been over a year since the release of the DualSense Edge Pro Controller and I had it since day zero because PlayStation did send this out for me to review. This video is not sponsored nor the video last year, but I really do appreciate Sony for sending this out to me. For $200, is it worth it one year later? When you see somebody with an Edge controller in their hand, you know they're a serious gamer. This is very similar to those Scuf or those Battle Beaver controllers from back in the days. And I'm happy to see that Sony finally made their own official PlayStation controller, Pro controller, I should say. Design wise, I really do love the way how this controller looks. It just looks premium. It looks better than the regular DualSense controller. You have the blackout buttons, the directional pad is black. And then also you have a glossy finish in the center piece, although not everybody is a fan of that gloss, but you could very easily customize it. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And essentially, even looking at the touchpad, you're going to see the attention to details. You can even see all the PlayStation shapes there. So circle, cross, box, and triangle. And even transitioning to the top, you have that gloss finish on the top. Um, and I must say, I'm kind of surprised I didn't get no scratches on the gloss parts. And alongside the back, you have the same grip too with the PlayStation shapes on there. So triangle, square, cross, if you look at it very closely. So I really do appreciate the attention to details here. Sony definitely did knock it out of the park here. And then alongside with that, you have your adjustments to the trigger stops. If you like to be pressed all the way down, or you like it to press halfway, or even just instant like a button. Um, this is going to also help for your response times, especially games like Call of Duty, those Twitch shooters. Of course, you have your paddles on the back. Me personally, I do prefer these style paddles. They're just easier to press, in my opinion, uh, compared to the regular ones. And yeah, I've never seen a controller like this before with these paddles. So yeah, so comfortability, Sony definitely did knocked out of the park too and it feels just like a regular dual sense controller and pressing those paddles on the back it feels comfortable it doesn't feel intrusive at all it just feels natural of course you could customize those paddles to whatever button you like this is actually going to give you that advantage and also too the case i want to talk about the case real quick this hard shell case is solid as a rock although it is starting to show its wear and tearness and i wish this came in black but i understand the aesthetics of the playstation 5 it makes a lot more sense of course on the zippers you have the playstation insignia logo and as well as on the center too as well and beveled in the case and on the back you have the playstation shapes too as well you have a compartment to charge up the controller while it's in the case which is a genius move because you're not playing the game so you may as well get a charge in but i'm gonna be honest one year later i have yet to use this because i have the official playstation charging dock anytime i want to rest up for a second i just toss it onto my charging dock and just go about my way. And when I'm done playing, I just zip it right back onto the case. And I still have my type C to USB A charging cable. Now I, <laughs> I barely use this cable also because I have so many type C cables laying around, but I must say this is a really lengthy cable, really lengthy to the point where you're not gonna even have a problem reach it to your ps5 at all but unfortunately if you have the ps5 slim those are all type c's on the front so you may need to get a type c to type c cable in the foreseeable future or even better yet if you just want to charge your dual sense edge pick up a nice power bank this one here is from charge these guys make one of the best power banks and, and here's another one here this is the storm 2 or i forgot the name of this one but i'm gonna throw a link in the description to this it's really cool has this transparent look. Actually, it's pretty dead. For me, I never really use the cable to plug it into my PS5. I always use a power bank, but take a look in the case too. I like how it has this QR code so you can be able to scan and learn more about the DualSense Edge. And on the bottom, this is where you store your paddles, thumbstick caps, which they have different heights. I picked the tallest one for the right side for my aim in Call of Duty because the taller the stick, the better your aim is gonna be. I would say this though. This is one of those controllers, once you set it, you can basically forget it. I never find myself have to swap out the thumbstick caps for each game. I just get accustomed to that one. And last but not least, you have this lock, which I never use. So once you plug in the Type-C on your DualSense Edge, the cable is not going to go flying out. So this is a nice design choice, especially for the pro gamers. They always have their controllers plugged in for the best 
connection and low latency and everything. But to me, I just play wireless, it's convenient. But yeah, this is a nice case. It's included, of course, and it's not wrong with it. I remember spending $200 on the Battle Beaver controller from back in the days, and it didn't come with no case, nothing. So I'm happy to get a case on the PlayStation side. Now, I wanna show you guys the customization options. So first things first, you can remove the front plate. So there's a little release level on the back. Push it down and it's gonna pop right out. And with this plate, you can basically buy different plates on Amazon or maybe AliExpress or Timu. But the whole purpose of this is to remove the actual analog stick. Now, once you're removing this, you gotta make sure your controller is off. And then now you can remove a thumbstick. So this is very convenient because of the analog stick drift, which is very common on the DualSense controllers. So with the DualSense Edge controller, you can basically swap out the thumbstick, pick up another one for 20 bucks, and you're back in the game without spending another $200. And also, you guys are probably wondering, why is my PS logo white? Is it supposed to be black? And I'm pretty sure you guys realize with my create button and the options button, you could be able to see those buttons are black. They are supposed to be white, but I think it goes well with the design of the controller. I wanna put these two on the scale between the regular DualSense controller versus the Edge. I, one thing I wanna to touch on, the elephant in the room, the battery life. Now I've done a battery drain test when this controller first came out. Make sure you guys watch that. And I must say the battery life is pretty trash. And it's so unfortunate to say because everything about the Edge controller is absolutely fantastic. Because even with the regular DualSense controller, the battery life was pretty crappy. So the fact how PlayStation made the battery even smaller is really quite unfortunate. But like I said earlier, I have power banks everywhere. Literally everywhere you turn there's a power bank. I have at least maybe like 10 power banks in my room right now. So, oh, and I forgot to mention, you do have these function buttons. Now the function button, if you hold this down, this is gonna give you all your profiles. By holding the function button and press it up or down on the D-pad, it's gonna allow you to adjust the volume on your headset. And also you can control the game slash chat balance by pressing left or right while still holding that function button. That is super convenient, especially for headsets that don't even have the, the game balance mixer. And I think this is a perfect segue to show you guys my profiles on my DualSense Edge. So without further ado, let's transition to my PS5. And all right, ladies and gentlemen, here's my PS5. If you wanna see what's on my PS5, what's installed, I'll throw a link in the description or the card on screen now, but I'm gonna press the function button on my DualSense Edge, and I'm gonna press the options button so we can see exactly what profile we're working with here. So I really only have three profiles, to be honest, and 90% of the time, I always put it on Call of Duty. Anytime I grab this controller, I'm always playing Call of Duty. And let's let's take a look at this uh, these settings here. So we're gonna you can customize the buttons here. So literally you can adjust triangle to be square or 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 circle to be X if you like. So whatever you like to do, you can customize it to your liking. But the really the 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 meat and potatoes here is definitely the paddles on the back here. So in this case, I have the right bumper set to circle, and on the left bumper is set to X. So in Call of Duty, X is to jump, and in this case, circle is to crouch, or if you press and hold it, you go from, uh, prone. Now this is not going to be the best settings or the best presets, but this is just what I have and what I'm comfortable with. And it turns out the stick sensitivity, you can control the sensitivity on how the analog stick reacts. So in this case, this is just regular. So when you move the analog stick, it goes exactly to where you want. So I'm moving the analog stick right now in motion right now, but you have presets where you can have different sensitivity curves. So, uh, so as in this case here, I'm moving my analog stick and the, the controller input is this, but the blue line is the assigned input. So it's actually moving faster when it, than what it is, which is um, could come in handy uh, for Call of Duty. But really, I like to adjust the right stick because who's going to adjust the left stick to move around? 
Uh, so in this case, the right stick to aim, I have it set to steady. I think this is the best setting for Call of Duty. I think it's, I think this is the best one because you can raise up your sensitivity on Call of Duty while still keeping your aim nice and steady. Right away, I just found steady to be the best one. You have digital, basically this is just like instant, almost like instant. I don't really recommend that. You had dynamic where it reacts a certain way. So you have different presets. So you just got to pick the one that you are comfortable with. Um, this is going to take some time. You may have to go on Call of Duty and play with some bots to see what exactly is the best setting. If you find a preset, but it needs to be slightly modified, you could do that too as well. But uh, honestly, I think the default zero is the best one. And also, of course, you have your dead zone too that you can adjust to. But the trigger dead zones pretty easy i like my triggers to be instantaneous so you can have a dead zone on the trigger so when you press it down so that blue that blue bar that's me pressing it down um and that's exactly how i like it maybe this will be convenient if you're playing maybe gran turismo or any racing game but uh, i think for call of duty that's the best one vibration i typically like to turn it off i think on call of duty I have it set to off, but um, I had it weak. And remember, the battery life is pretty low on this, so you may want to probably disable vibration altogether. And same thing with the triggers. Now, with the trigger stops, I forgot to mention, the adaptive triggers will not work if you adjust the trigger stop. If you have it back to default, then the trigger stops will be able to work accordingly. When I was playing Returnal, I noticed that right away because one of the best things about Returnal is the adaptive triggers to be able to have alternate fires. And that's why I decided to create a different presets for eternal and you guys can see i have the haptic set to strong and yeah for the most part pretty much everything is exactly the same yeah ratchet and clank was just like a one and done type of thing but um pretty much default settings the button alignment is exactly the same like call of duty and even the stick sensitivity was set the same because technically it is a shooting game um so yeah that's basically it <laughs> And at any point, you can hold that function button. You have that pop-up menu, and you can be able to instantaneously switch profiles, which is very convenient. And then very quickly, you can press the option button to get to the settings, and then that's how you could be able to do it. So all this stuff that I just mentioned is nice and all, but who is this controller exactly for? Now, if you play Call of Duty, this is an absolute no-brainer. Maybe even Fortnite, you can be able to utilize this too as well. But if you play a lot of fighting games, which I know a lot of people brought this for a fighting game because of the trigger stops being so fast when you're blocking. I would say you're probably better off getting a fight pad or an arcade stick at that point. But games like Returnal, now this is different. A game like Returnal is fast paced action. Timing is everything. The DualSense Edge is probably mandatory because well, that game you gotta be dodging, you gotta be on your toes very quickly. So I say all of that just to say yes, it is worth it. If you have the money to spend, Thank me later, and I highly recommend it. I really do put a stamp of approval on this one, a pop 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 pops approval, that is. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes today's video. Comment down below what you guys think. Thumbs up the video, help me out tremendously, and make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on. Have a simple day.